Well, if you're ready for the word, shout, bring it on. Merry Christmas, everybody. Aren't y'all glad you're not at the outlets today? How many of you glad you're not at Walmart? Listen, I don't ever want to be at Walmart, but I especially don't want to be there today. I feel like God has been good to somebody in this house. Come on, don't praise him unless he's been good to you. I said, don't praise him unless he's been good to you. But if he's been good to you, David said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Well, you know how we're doing things now. We're going right into the word. Stand for the reading of God's word. If you're ready, shout, I'm ready. Listen, I'm grateful at this Christmas time that I know Christmas is all about Christ. I'm not saying that it's not good to give gifts and be together as family, but I'm thankful for Jesus. Anybody here thankful for Jesus? Come on. We're looking at Matthew 1, 23. I feel like I have a little something, something that I'm going to deposit in your spirit. It's going to be even better than the dressing and the collards you're going to have on Christmas Day. Come on. So the Bible says in Matthew 1, 23, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name. Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Honey, that's some good news right there. I want to take for my sermon today, just for a few minutes, the wait is over. I don't know what you've been waiting on, but Jesus is here. And since Jesus is here, y'all, he ain't on the way, he's here. He's not about to show up. He's here. He's not just coming through the door. He's already here. He's not landing a little bit later on at the airport. He's here right now. How many of you can be thankful that God is with you today? All right. Slip up your hands. The wait is over. Father, I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for the Christ of Christmas. I know that I would not be where I am today. That's right here without you. Bless your precious people. Remind us at this Christmas time that we don't have to get caught up in the hustle and bustle and forget about the Christ of Christmas. We give you the praise that when we could not get to you, you came to us. We love you, Emmanuel, God with us. Come on, give the Lord a great big praise. Can you shout on Christmas Sunday? Before you sit down, just look at three or four people and tell them Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. His name shall be called Emmanuel. Somebody say Emmanuel. God with us. I'm so glad today that Jesus is not distant, y'all. He's present. I'm glad that he's not missing. He is manifesting. And I love every name that's used for Jesus. I I love that he is described as wonderful and counselor and mighty God and everlasting father and prince of peace and bread of life and lily of the valley and captain of the host. I love that he's Isaiah's prince of peace, Isaac's ram, Job's redeemer, Abraham's seed and the seed of the woman. I love that he's the baptizer, the provider and the ancient of days. But there is something about the name Emmanuel that blesses my soul. There is something about the name Emmanuel that takes it to a whole nother level because it tells me not only is he wonderful counselor, mighty God, Yahweh Rapha, the healer, the deliverer, the provider, the sanctifier, the baptizer, not only is he the captain of the hope and host and the lion of the tribe of Judah, he is also Emmanuel, God with us. I don't know how much it would mean to me if he was all that and not accessible. I don't know how much all that would mean to me if he was all that and not with me. But I've got some good news today. His name is Emmanuel, and he is God with us. How many of you are thankful today that God is with you? Oh, come on. I I got just a, a few people. I said, how many of you are thankful today that Jesus is with you? Make a little noise if you are. I truly don't know where I would be this morning through the twists and turns of my life, through the perplexing situations and the uncertain days that I've walked in, highs and lows, ups and downs. I don't know where I would be this morning had God not been 
with me. I don't know where I would be today had he not been Emmanuel in my life. Time and time again, I made it because Emmanuel was with me. See, a lot of y'all don't know the pit that I came up out of. Some of y'all don't know how good the Lord has been to me. So I have a personal praise, not a preacher praise. Come on, somebody. Y'all don't make me talk about it. I said, I have a personal praise, not a preacher praise. That means I would praise him without a microphone. That means I would praise him with, without a stage because I know where he has brought me from. And when you remember how good Emmanuel has been to you, don't nobody have to beg you to praise the Lord because you know what you made it out of. See, on your row, you don't know every story that's in the room. But if we had time today to take a little bit of time and talk about where people came from everybody in this room could testify they would not be here without Emmanuel how many of you know you wouldn't be here without the Lord somebody give him praise if you know it See, when you embrace the revelation of Emmanuel, God with you, then, then things begin to change. The impossible suddenly becomes possible. The unbearable becomes bearable. We can find peace in trouble because we know that he's with us. And when we have Emmanuel, we have the courage to attempt radical things. We have the courage to start afresh and anew. We have the courage to forget what is behind us and press on for what is to come. When Emmanuel is with us, we have this solitude that it doesn't matter what comes, we've got a feeling that everything is going to be all right. That that's the true manifestation and the miracle of Christmas through the birth and incarnation of Christ is Emmanuel. God is with us. And at Christmas time, remember people come and go, but Emmanuel stays. There are some people that you thought in your life, you thought they were coming to stay, but they've come and they've gone. We've all had people in our life that we thought were permanent only to find out that they were temporary. I'm so glad that Jesus is not temporary. I'm so glad that he's not a one-night stand. Come on, somebody. He's more than a sugar daddy. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. L listen, you need to understand and comprehend that we have folks in our lives that come and folks in our lives that go. We thought they were permanent, but they were temporary. And one of the worst things you can do, young person, is make permanent decisions with temporary people. Oh, that, that, that's not real Christmassy, but it is the truth. You better be real careful on your sexual decisions. You better be real careful who you hook up with. Come on. How many of you know you don't need to be hooking up unless you're married? Nobody's shouting, but... <laughs> But here's the truth. I see so many people, they make permanent decisions with temporary folks. But I've come to tell you today that Jesus, Emmanuel, is not temporary. He is from everlasting to everlasting. He's always been and he always will be. And I thank the Lord that he's right here with me. We read all through the Bible of accounts of God being with his people. We catch glimpses of Emmanuel even in the Old Testament, long before he manifested in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago in the form of a baby named Jesus. And one of the great examples of God being with his people is found in the Old Testament when Moses stands before the burning bush. He's receiving his assignment and he's intimidated and overwhelmed by what the Lord has called him to do. He is called to be the deliverer of the Jews from Egypt. This stuttering, this stuttering uh, uh, wanderer is called to be a deliverer. And he doesn't seem to be able to grasp the fact that he can do it. And the account is so powerful. Moses is chosen, but he's in crisis. Have you ever had time where you knew that God chose you, but you, you're in crisis, you're struggling? And the Bible says in Exodus 3.10, come now therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said, who am I? Who am I? Why would you choose me that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? So God said to him, I will certainly 
be with you. Right there is a glimpse of the Old Testament of Emmanuel. It's obvious as we study the text that Moses felt intimidated and inadequate. And he asked the question, y'all. He said, who am I? And there will be times in your faith walk with God. Times when you feel like you can't do what you've been assigned to do. Times when you feel inadequate and you will think and you might even say, who am I? That is the story of my life. That is the story of Jim Ray his life. The things that I have been called to do, I've never been qualified. I felt like to do them. I've never had the ability. There's always somebody who's more qualified than you. But I'm so glad the old saying says that God does not call the qualified. He qualifies the called. Come on, somebody. He will take you further than you ever thought you could go. He will raise you right up out of a mess and turn your mess into a miracle. He will save you when folks say you can't be saved. He will anoint you, appoint you, and blow people's mind around you because it looks like there's no way that you should be able to accomplish what you're accomplishing. But when the Lord is on your side, all things are possible. Moses said, who am I? And again, that is the story of my life. But listen to the reply of Jehovah. Listen to what the Lord says. He said, I will certainly be with you. He said, I'm going to be Emmanuel to you. Now, there are several words translated from this Hebrew phrase. I will certainly be with you, but it is the word oath, O-W-T-H, pronounced like our English word oath. And an oath is a statement of fact act or promise. The word oath is in the Hebrew has a multi-level meaning. It means a distinguishing mark. First of all, when you mark something, you are declaring that it belongs to you. Moses, when you go, don't be afraid because you don't belong to Pharaoh. You belong to me. Moses, when you go, don't be intimidated because you won't go by yourself because you're not under the authority of Pharaoh. Moses, I am with you. I am right there in the thick of things with you. Let me tell you, baby, there are people that will underestimate you right here at Christmas time. They'll say there's no way you can do the things that God has called you to do. You can't raise a good family. You can't start a business. You can't have a new beginning, but the devil is a liar. I hear the Lord say, I will certainly be with you. There are some of you here today, the only way you made it through what you made it through is the fact that he has certainly been with you. Uh, tell your neighbor, say, he has certainly been with me. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it's not a doubt. It's not a question. It's not a perhaps. It's not a maybe. He has certainly been with me. People don't know where you came from. They don't know what you made it through. They don't know how good God has been to you. They don't know how many times you've been broke down, broken hearted, but God turned your broken heart into a breakthrough. They don't know that you, God has certainly been with me. I dare you to look at that one neighbor again and say, hey neighbor, say you just sit here, but on Christmas Sunday I got to praise him because he has certainly been with me. Can we take a 30 second praise break and just praise him right now because he has certainly been with me. Huh. He said, Moses, you walk in that place and you walk in with the cool confidence that, that, that you, you belong to me, that I've made an oath to you, that I have marked you an oath is a factor of promise. It's a distinguishing mark. First of all, when you mark something, you're declaring it belongs to you. You're putting your name on it. Come on now. You're declaring that it is mine. And the Bible said the Lord knows them that are his. Hallelujah. Now let me tell you something. One day there's going to be a trumpet blast. One day Jesus is going to come again. And let me tell you, the Lord's going to know them that are his. Because in a moment the terrestrial is going to go extraterrestrial. I'm telling you, this, this body is going to give up its gravity and we are going to rise. Some won't make it, but the Lord knows them that are he is. Come on, don't make me talk about the rapture. But does anybody believe in the rapture of the church? 
God told Moses, he said, I'm about to distinguish you. Huh. I'm, 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 I'm about to distinguish you. Are you ready for this? When you distinguish something, it means you're making it different. God was letting Moses know my presence is about to make the difference in your life. My presence, Emmanuel, I'm going to be with you. And it's going to make the difference in your life. So many want the power of Emmanuel. They just don't want it to make them any different. But how many of you know the presence of the Lord will change a man? Hallelujah. The manifested presence of the Lord will change a man. God, now I'm going to tell you the truth. God has not called us to blend in. God has called us to stand out. And the world is desperate to see a church that is different. The presence of Emmanuel in your life will distinguish you and make you different. Jesus wasn't born. He didn't die on the cross. And he didn't raise from the dead to leave us the same. But he did it to make us different. God was letting Moses know you're not going to be alone and you will be successful. He said, if I'm with you, you're not going to be alone and you will be successful. How many of you are determined that as you go to 2020, you're not going to go into 2020 alone, but you're going into 2020 in the presence of Jehovah. Come on. Wave at me if you want Emmanuel, God with us. Okay. If he's going to be with you, which he is in the name of Jesus, God was telling Moses, he said, listen, Moses, you're, going, you're not going to be alone and you will be successful because I'm going to be with you. Look at your neighbor and just say, hey, neighbor, let me talk to you. Say in 2020, you'll not be alone. Now point at him and say, you will be successful. My, 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 my. Come on, on Christmas Sunday, can you give God a praise that you won't be alone and you will be successful? See, we catch another glimpse of Emmanuel when we find him. Uh, it, it doesn't matter what the situation is, you're going to be successful. And we catch a, a glimpse of Emmanuel knowing that even when Joshua was given his assignment, he felt like things were, he couldn't do it. Things had been a mess. But at Christmas time, remember, when Emmanuel is with you, he will even bless you in a mess. Sometimes we look at our lives and see, things seem crazy and, and, and we can just declare in faith, God can bless a mess. Somebody throw your hands up and say, God can bless a mess. Yeah, yeah, you and me prove it every day. Come on. God can bless a mess. The stable was a mess. The animals were a mess. The atmosphere was a mess. But a Messiah shows up in the midst of a manger. Come on. Deity among donkeys. It, it, Jesus showed up in a mess. Hallelujah. He didn't show up at the palace. He shows up in a manger. Jesus shows up in a mess. Some of y'all look around at Christmas time and things are a mess. Get ready for Jesus to show up because God can turn the greatest mess into the greatest miracle. That's what I know. Listen to what the Lord told Joshua when he called him to lead the Israelites into the promised land against great resistance. He said in Joshua 1.5, no one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you be strong and courageous. There's Emmanuel again. And Moses was basically the spiritual father. And he said, as I was with your daddy, so I'm going to be with you. How many of you can say you didn't start this thing? That there was somebody a generation or two before you that gave you this walk with Jesus that you've got right now. And God was with them and now the Lord is with you. And now you're looking, God is with your children. And some of y'all can look and say God is with my grandchildren the devil wants to make you think that it stops with you and it started with you but let me tell you something this has been going on for 2,000 years Jesus has been with us he made it to you and he's gonna make it to your children and he's gonna make it to your grandchildren somebody give God a shout if you believe it praise the Lord even if you encounter opposition 
and resistance and warfare, this Christ of Christmas, this Emmanuel, is right there with you. Now, now this, this Christmas, here's what I want you to do. Because the Lord said, said uh, listen, I want you to attempt big things, Joshua. This Christmas, you can attempt big things since Emmanuel is with you. I, I don't want you to make out like God can't make your life victorious and great. He can I don't want you to sit here this morning and feel like your lot in life is to be defeated at Christmas time because it's not. The Lord is with you. I'm reminded of the great story in the New Testament when Emmanuel showed up. Do you remember the story of Paul and Silas? They had been in Philippi doing incredible ministry. The crowd rose up against them. They were stripped, they were beaten, they were abused, and they land in prison almost dead. And the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. Don't let these guys escape. Don't let anything happen. And when the jailer received these instructions, he put them in the innermost secure part of the prison. He shackled their feet and their hands to the wall. It was dark. It was damp. It was a dungeon. There were no beds. There were no toilets. There was no AC. There was no room service. There was no electricity. There was no Popeyes or Chick-fil-A. Come on, somebody. There is stink. There's rats. There's spider. And there's pain. They have been there since 3 o'clock. Nine hours later, it's about midnight. You peek in the cell and you expect to hear groaning because they were half dead. You expect to hear moaning. You expect to hear defeat. You expect to hear pain. You expect to hear people rehearsing their problems. You might even expect to hear a little cussing. Come on, somebody. They might have been like your neighbor. Hello. Huh? You, you, you expect to hear... <laughs> I'll just pass right by that. You expect to hear grumbling and complaining, but lo and behold, Paul and Silas are worshiping the Lord. It's about midnight. It's about midnight. I'm thinking midnight. Why in the world, God, do I see you showing up at midnight? Because Why didn't you just show up earlier? Why do you show up at midnight? And, and I thought about midnight, even though it's dark, midnight, midnight, midnight. Midnight tells me that there's a new day about to start. It's 12 o'clock, but it's about to be 12.01, and a new day is about to start. It may look dark, but a new day is about to start. Somebody has been in prison. And somebody in this room has had a season where you've been hanging on to heaven and hell has been coming against you. And I'm telling you, it's midnight, but something new is about to occur in your midst. If you'll just praise him right where you are, there's a new thing that's going to be released. They're in that prison and they're half dead and they begin to worship the Lord. They've been there nine hours. At seemingly the most inopportune time, they're giving God glory. They're giving him praise when, when it didn't seem conducive and it didn't seem sensible. They're in there breaking their necks, magnifying the Lord. See, when Emmanuel is with you, it's always time to worship. When Jesus is with you, it's always time to give God praise. See, the truth is worship will get you out of the mess. Worship will get you through a problem. Worship will get you through a predicament. Read the record. The Bible said while they were praising. While they were praising. While they were praising. While they were praising, the prison doors flew open. While they were praising, the shackles fell off. While they were praising, the chains were loose. Not before they were praising. Not after they were praising. Praising, but while they were praising, while they were praising, not only did they get delivered, everybody in the jail got delivered. Not only did they get set free, everybody that was in prison got set free. But it didn't happen before they praised. It didn't happen after they praised. It happened while they were praising. It happened right in the middle of their praise. See, anybody can praise him when you've already got what you want and you've already been delivered and you've already been set free. But when you can sit in prison and say, God, I don't understand why I'm going through what I'm going through, but I thank you that you are Emmanuel, and I thank you that you are God with us, and you can praise the Lord. I'm telling you, while you are praising, God will set you free. What would you praise the Lord like on Christmas Sunday if you believed that your breakthrough was locked up in your praise, that your financial miracle was locked up in your praise, that your salvation of your family was locked up in your praise, that he 
healing in your body was locked up in your praise would you sit here on December 22nd and look around at people and say you don't understand how deep my problems are and you don't understand how stank my prison is or would you open your mouth and give Emmanuel something to show up in God's liable to move for your family while you're clapping your hands. God's liable to move for your family while you're shouting unto God. While they were praising, as they praised the Lord, their shackles fell off. As they praised the Lord, their chains hit the ground. As they praised the Lord, they were dancing in their dilemma. They were shouting in their shackles. They were praising in their pain. But something happened. While they were praising, everybody around them got delivered. See, somebody's breakthrough is locked up in your praise right now. If you praise him, somebody on your road might get set free. If you praise him, somebody on your road I dare you one, two, three, give the Lord a praise. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, say, I know it's not normal to praise the Lord in trouble, but I dare you right now to give him praise with me and watch Emmanuel show up. Come on, praise God until somebody around you gets set free. See, the truth is, praising people are different than other people. So, so here Paul and Silas are. They've been in jail for nine hours, half dead, stinkiest, dirtiest, nastiest part of the prison. But remember, he's Emmanuel who shows up. Come on, somebody. So, so, so Paul and Silas are abnormal, and then the normal man, as a normal person, the jailer wakes up. He witnesses all this. Everybody's been delivered. All the doors are open, and he knows what's coming. He's about to be tortured and tormented because he lost these prisoners, and he gets his sword out to commit suicide. And as the jailer is about to kill himself, Paul shouts from within the dungeon. Y'all, y'all don't, y'all. Paul is still in the dungeon. And Paul calls out with a loud voice, do yourself no harm, for we are all here. I'm going to stop right here and just talk to you for a minute. This jailer calls for uh, calls and 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 and, and there rushes in and, and sees Paul and Silas and falls before them and cries, What must I do to be born again? I want you to catch what's going on here. These prisoners could have left, but they chose to stay when they could have left. You know why? Uh, because God in the prison was greater than anything outside the prison that they had they had ever encountered. I'd rather have God in trouble than be by myself or down to myself without him. God in the prison is great. Somebody give him praise. There was an earthquake, but what changed that man's life was not the earthquake, but the fact that the prisoners stayed. Now, here's where I'm going. I'm, I'm going to jump back on Christmas, but bear with me for a minute. Sometimes God glo God's glory is not revealed by what you escape, but by what you endure. Look at your neighbor and say, you don't know what I made it through. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you don't even know what I made it through this year. You don't even know what I made it through in May. You don't even know the hell I fought in March. You don't even know what I made it through in August. You don't even know what I've endured. And sometimes the glory is not revealed by what you escape. But when you look back and say, I never would have made it, but God got his presence in your presence and you made it. Give God a praise for what you endured. There are some things I made it through because Emmanuel was with me. These guys must have worshiped straight into the presence of Emmanuel. And listen, when Emmanuel is with you, you can make it through more than you think you can. And I've come to tell you at this Christmas time, God is with you. You don't have to run. You don't have to hang your head. You don't have to hide. Just as God was with Paul and Silas and, and, and Moses and, and Joshua and Daniel in the lion's den and Shadrach. And Meshach and Abednego, you're going to be okay. 
Don't overreact if you serve Emmanuel here at Christmas time. God is with you. And when God is with you, your circumstances are circumstantial. That means God is with you and he's greater than your circumstances. Paul and Silas were in a crisis, but God is, was with them. Christ is still the Christ of the crisis. Merry Christmas. Look at your neighbor and say, hey, neighbor. Say, Christ is still the Christ of your crisis. Say, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. There's not a heartache that he can't handle. There's not a heartbreak that he can't heal. Has God been with you? That's what I want to ask you on this Christmas Sunday. When your life was turned upside down, come on somebody. Has God been with you? When you went through that cancer report, has God been with you? When you were battling through that depression, has God been with you? When people talked about you like a dog and questioned your motives, when people you thought would love you forever walked out on you has God been I'm looking for people that he's been Emmanuel to has he been with you when you didn't even deserve it has he been with you when you lost your mind has he been with you when you lost your way has he been with you when you lost your sanctification has he been with you when you acted the fool has he been with you when it was tough has he been with you through a hard marriage has he been with you through a difficult season has he been with you when folks talked about you like a dog when you were doing the best you could to do the right thing has he been with you has he been Emmanuel when your children went crazy has he been Emmanuel when your marriage was crumbling has he been Emmanuel when alcoholism tried to take you and addiction tried to bring you down the only reason you're here is because God is not limited by time or space he's here right now today he's in this room he's been with me somebody give him praise if he's been Emmanuel for you God is not limited at this Christmas time by your location or your situation. Emmanuel is with you. Hmm. Somebody throw up your hands and say, say this after me. Say, Emmanuel is with me. So I have some blessings coming my way. My, 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 my. I don't know if you believed it or not. Raise your hands one more time and say, Emmanuel is with me. So I have some breakthroughs, miracle breakthroughs coming my way. Hold your hands up and say, I think I'll go ahead and praise him right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. First Chronicles 16, 27, glory and honor are in his presence. Strength and gladness are in his place. Glory and honor. Somebody say glory and honor. Somebody say strength and gladness. Here's four gifts that I want you to unwrap here at Christmas time. It's found right here in Chronicles. Glory, honor, strength, and gladness. That's what I'm going to unwrap because of Jesus. There are four presents, four gifts that I'm going to claim in this next season. Glory, his glory, represents his power demonstrated in your life. I want to tell you, get ready for his power to be demonstrated in your life. Oh. I, I want his power to be demonstrated in my life. I want his power to be demonstrated in my church. I want his power to be demonstrated in my family, in my children. Somebody get ready for God's power to be demonstrated in your life. Hallelujah. His glory to be demonstrated in your life. Then he promised honor. Somebody say honor. Honor means promotion. It means to have good standing. It means at Christmas time, I want you to claim that you will have good standing. You will stand out from the ordinary. I'm ready to see you stand out from the ordinary. I want to see you have supernatural victory, supernatural joy, supernatural peace, supernatural power. Who's ready for something that's out of the ordinary? Some of y'all say, I would just take ordinary and not weird. Come on. I'm telling you, don't you expect weird? Don't you expect strange? Expect supernatural 
manifestation of God's power. I want your children to be set free and it to be out of the ordinary. I want to see financial breakthroughs in your life that are supernatural. I want to see depression run from you and joy get on you that the world can't give to you and the world can't take it away. I'm looking for this next season, praise the Lord, for you to unwrap the gift of the extraordinary. Listen, he promised that he would give you strength. Strength means this. You will have the ability to withstand the attack of the enemy. That means that when the devil comes in, you're going to find out that you got the strength to deal with that dog. Uh, Y'all don't make me preach. I'm telling you at Christmas time, you ain't going down, you're going up. You're not giving out. You're in the name of Jesus. You're getting a fresh anointing that Emmanuel is with you. Your business is going to be blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. Your family is going to be saved. Your son is going to be delivered. Your daughter is going to be set free. You say, well, Pastor Rayleigh, why do you speak things like that? Don't you know how perplexing my situation is? The Bible says you will decree a thing and it will be established in the book of Job. The Bible said death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. The Bible said whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth is loose in heaven. The Bible said if you will say to this mountain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and you do not doubt in your heart you will have whatsoever you say. So why don't I open my mouth and speak breakthrough over your life and tell you that no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper and you will withstand the attack of the enemy and you will overcome if you're ready to overcome at Christmas time give God a shout in here glory honor strength and then gladness gladness means you're gonna have a life of joy you will have peace and power because of the, the presence of Emmanuel. Mm. I don't even know if I should do this because some of y'all will probably email me. But just say, ha. Come on, say, ha, ha. Sometimes you just got, you ever had to fake laugh? Somebody tells you a joke. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, sometimes you got to fake it till you make it. Sometimes you got to say, I'm not going to let the condition of my child rob the joy that God wants to put in my heart. I declare in the name of Jesus that you will have a life of joy and will have peace and power because of the presence of the Lord. I release joy over you. I release gladness over you. Come on, raise your hands. I declare that this Christmas time, you won't have it out with your family. Come on. You won't have it out with your sons or your daughters. You're going to have so much joy. If you're ready for joy, one, two, three, somebody give God a shout. Emmanuel means the wait is over. I've come to tell you, you've been waiting on your time, but the wait is over. You've been waiting on your turn, but the wait is over. You've been waiting for God to move in your family, but I'm declaring in faith that the wait is over. You've been waiting for a better job, a better situation, but get in faith and say, Emmanuel, I'm believing that the wait is over. Somebody say, the wait is over. Now, here's where we're going to try to land this plane. I want you to believe. Are there any believers in the room today? No, I only want to hear from the believers. Are there any believers over here? Are there any believers in the middle? No, no, here we are at Christmas time. I'm looking for believers. Are there believers over here? Are there any believers over here? Are there any believers over here? How about way back in the back? Where are the believers? Somebody shall believe. Somebody shall believe. Somebody shall believe. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. Say, I believe. 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 Now bring up the word believe. Here's what I want to, I want you to declare this. B-E-L-I-E-V-E. -E -E. Because Emmanuel lives, I expect victory. 
every time. I'm looking for some believers. I'm looking for some believers. I said I'm looking for some believers. Somebody say because Emmanuel lives. I expect victory every time. Somebody give God a shout. Tomorrow morning, I want you to get up and say, because Emmanuel lives, I expect victory every time. I want you to look at your sons and daughters, and I want you to say, I believe, because Emmanuel lives, I expect victory. Some of the time, once in a while, now and then, somebody shout, Every time, every time, every time. That's why any time and every time is the right time to give God crazy praise. Any time and every time is the right time to open your mouth and magnify the Lord. Emmanuel. You can be seated. God with us. Hallelujah. 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 Let every heart prepare him room. Let every Prepare him. Ooh, sing that, John. Let every heart prepare him. Ooh, and heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. Let heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive. The wait is over, yes it is. Let every heart prepare him and heaven and nature sing and heaven and nature sing let every head bowed and every eye closed if you're in the room today and say pastor I, I need that Emmanuel you've been talking about the one that you said that if I believe because Emmanuel lives I expect victory every time I need him to be present in my life I'm not where I need to be with the Lord and when you pray pastor pray for me there's things in my life that alienate me from God separate me from the Lord when you pray I want you to pray for me. If you're not where you need to be with Jesus on this Sunday, December 22nd, you'd say, Pastor, when you pray, pray for me. When I count to three, raise your hand. Are you ready? Pray for me, Pastor. One. Pray for me, Pastor. Two. Three. Slip that hand up right now. Just remember me since you're praying, Pastor. Hands in every section have been raised. I want you to take your hand and place it on your heart. My, my altar workers are getting in position right now. 
But I want everybody to take your hand and place it on your heart and pray this after me. Pray, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I come to you. I come to you. And I'm asking you. And I'm asking you. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. For all my sins. For all my sins. Take my heart. Take my heart. Wash it clean. Wash it clean. In your precious blood. In your precious blood. Jesus, I don't want to do this journey. Jesus, I don't want to do this without journey. your presence. Without your presence. Have your way. Have your way. In my life. In my life. Make me brand new. Make me brand new. Make me what you want me to be. Make me what you want me to be. I prepare room. I prepare room. In my heart. In my heart. For you. For you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody give Jesus a Christmas praise. Now, Pastor Josh is going to come close this service out. But I want to tell you something, Precious. I want you to understand something. I want you to know that it doesn't matter how big the mountain is, how big the problem is, how intense the situation may be. Because Emmanuel lives, I expect victory. How often? How many of you might say that this week at some point? Okay, precious. Let me also tell you this. Pastor Josh is going to talk about it. We have a phenomenal Christmas Eve service. There's nowhere like New Year's, at, nothing like New Year's at Calvary. The biggest party in town will be right here, and you won't even be hung over the next day. You who prayed this prayer, we want to see you. We want to meet you. If you need special prayer, Pastor Josh is going to open things up. But I'm going to be headed to the back, and if you're visiting with us, you can stop by and shake my hand. How many of y'all love Pastor Joshua Carter? Amen.